So I've been reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and working and working and working and working. You know, I, years ago, back when I used to do that whole teaching for money thing, I had a bunch of different students over here in Asia and I've stayed in touch with them through the years. And now they're in college and I feel old and I should. I mean, 30 years is old. I mean, it, it, you know. No, George, I am not yet qualified to act like I'm a know-it-all because I don't have babies of my own. No, George, one day I will have a baby of my own and then I'll get to run around and say, when you get to be a parent and I'll be justified in sounding like a know-it-all 13-year-old. But I'm not there yet. I'm not claiming that I can act like a know-it-all. I'm claiming that I'm old. There's a difference. All right. Um, sorry, uh, George is new and the podcast observer always likes to interrupt, but he keeps me on my toes. See, if he wasn't there interrupting with those questions that are so easy to answer, then, uh, well, I'd, I'd probably irritate somebody or get off topic. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, yes. I've been watching and seeing and I'm old and I'm talking with my uh, former students who are now in college. I, I've been running around t testing this uh, verb.pink. Uh, I've, I've got the um, you know, teaching people to use command line Linux. It's very simple. It's very, it's very, very easy. It's very, I mean, you type on a typewriter. I mean, you know, typing on a typewriter or keyboard, you know, that, that wasn't, I mean, we do things every day that we, what the, what are you falling down for? Stop knocking stuff over. Um, see, George, we all have things in our lives that seem impossible, but then we go learn them. And I, I remember the first, the first a wind instrument for a symphonic band I ever played. It was a saxophone. You know, the, the, the guy there had his truck with the different instruments. You know, I was 10 years old, going on 11, ready to enter music school. And the guy pulls out the truck and, and he's, he's got a little van there, pulled out a, 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 uh, an alto saxophone, told me to blow into the thing. I made a noise. He looked at my parents and shrugged, you know, eyebrows up, huh? you know, maybe, you know. You never know until you try. And I didn't first try music in a classroom. It was, it was outside some guy's van. And we had this awesome band director with wild 70 bell bottoms pants and crazy big hair that looks like a wig. His hair was more famous in our high school band than Donald Trump's hair is in the country. So I we just, we tried stuff. And that's how we knew what we were good at. And so often we think this or that is impossible. We try to make decisions on what things we should study and what we want to be if we grow up, when we grow up. Um, and, and it's, it's, I mean, that, that, that's the big secret about, you know, adulthood. Uh, the best kept secret kids say when they grow up and parents are saying if they grow up. I mean, none of us ever grow up. The, the, the issue is I'm running into these students that are now in college and they don't know what they want to do. In Asia, they have this test culture that says, take this test and we will tell you which schools we will allow you to attend. And it's, it's not a rule from the government. It's just like the education guild. And, and students have emotional depression issues. They, they don't think that they can, you know, I, I, I suggest to them, hey, you know, you could, you could learn to use Linux. What? Uh, where will I go to school to do it? You know? And so I'm grabbing them saying, hey, 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 stop playing video games for five minutes. And I, they're like, oh, oh, okay, what, 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 what do you want, former teacher? And I'm like, I get permission from their parents to do it. And I'm like, you know, please look at this. And they follow my how to type in Linux thing at verb.pink for 20 minutes and they get done. They go, oh my, it's so easy. I'm like, yeah, it is once you try. 
So my father was a teacher and I've always had a teacher streak in me and I've always tried to explain things to people. And that's one of the things that I've been doing is I've been trying to show people you can try stuff and decide for yourself whether you're good at it. You don't need to have the school say, you idiot, we're the ones that give you the test and we'll tell you what you're good at. So shut your face. You can try stuff. And, and it's like that's one of the best kept secrets in Asia. So I'm, I'm thinking about this and I'm going through this over here in Asia and I'm looking at the newspaper and I'm, I'm reading the stories of what's going on in North Korea. You know, some guy talks about how he was brainwashed. He, he, he went into the military and it was not what he thought it was. His parents would turn him in thinking that, that turning him in would help him because he was mentally sick for not loving the government. Kind of like people think about their pastor in the Sunday morning cult. And this girl leaves North Korea. She goes back to North Korea after being on TV in South Korea. And she says that it was terrible trying to get money. You know, I rem- I- I've talked to the Russians. I-, I had a Russian classmate. Most people in our school didn't know that she was, uh, she was uh, a Soviet. Uh, maybe not Russia. It could have been Ukraine or something. But it was under Russian control. And they actually escaped and came to America. And a lot of us classmates didn't know that. And... I remember years later talking with their mother and she went on about how America is not a free country. You can't suggest that communism is good. She would go on and on and on about how wonderful Gorbachev was. And I'm sitting there going, if Russia was so wonderful, why did you escape to America? I remember talking with the guy uh, in New York. Same thing. He had escaped from the Iron Curtain to get to America, to New York, found a job as a janitor and All he could do was talk about how wonderful Gorbachev was. And I'm sitting there scratching my head going, what's the problem? And he said, the problem is America is not free. I can't just go get food whenever I want. I mean, he really believed that freedom meant free food. He really believed that. And he'd gotten used to it. And like this happens when you have to work to put food in your own mouth Like, it's not easy. But that's what gives us new ideas to go forward. But if you don't know that, you don't know that. It's hard to learn. So this girl talking about how South Korea was difficult going back to North Korea, I really believe it. Maybe she was kidnapped, but it really was hard for her. They get out, they break out of their chains, but then they want right back in them. Even if it's Sunday morning. And, and we are now looking at this control culture where the new slave master is Google. People won't know life without Google doing everything for you. So what are we going to do? Now, I've, I've come to the conclusion that open source is the answer to all this. Open source technology, programming. I mean, open source technology is the answer to the environment, dude. We don't need environmental laws. We need the freedom to, to research and invent and make the stuff that'll make it go. It's out there, but we got to do it ourselves and stop asking other people to do everything for us. And it's hard because we love our chains, no matter which political ideology they come from. And I should probably, on that note, get to the point. Christians' reputation precedes them. They do a terrible job at nearly everything, argue with each other all the time, and look down on the rest of the people who keep the world spinning. Why? It's small thinking. They believe that one way or another, meeting Sunday morning is more valid. It's not that Christians think that Christians are better than others. It's that they think Sunday morning is better than others. But... If God made everything, isn't every day equally valid? Isn't all fellowship equally real? If Jesus is so big, Sunday morning is too small for him to fit. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.